This video will show how to install speed control into a Jeep Wrangler that didn't have it as original equipment. What I'm using for my instructions is a guide that came with a kit that Jeep used to sell. They sold all of these parts that you can see, everything you need to install the kit, and it was actually pretty nice. Trouble is you can't get it anymore. So the instructions are pretty clear, especially for mounting the mechanical parts. And so I'm going to skip over those. What I will do is supply a link to where you can download this online. I just found it online, downloaded it. I used it for the electrical part. When you get to the electrical part, what it says is go under the hood, look under your master cylinder, and if you find this plug, you're done. You can mount the mechanical stuff, plug that in, and you're good to go. If you don't, they have an overlay harness that they provided. Well, I just had to wire that up myself, and I'll show you how I did it. So if you don't have that plug, you've got some work to do, but it's not that bad. It's definitely doable. So they show their harness, but I just used regular wires, and you'll see that in the video. The first thing they do is they show you that you have to add pins to these ECU, to an ECU connector. This is uh, ECU C3, and you'll notice there's differences from model to model. There's special instructions for 05, 06, and there's some for 06 in particular, and that's the model year that I have. So the colors and things changed, even the connector numbers change. It's best if you have the factory service manual. I had that and used the schematics, it helped, but uh, this gives a pretty good overview. So the first thing you have to do is determine if you have the pins in the ECU. It turns out there's seven pins you need. Well, there's six pins you need, and two of them for me were already in there, and I think most in most cases they already are. So you're gonna have to add four. That's what I had to do, and they show you which four you add. And so in order to do that, you have to have the pins. So what I did is I, I got a connector from a junkyard and I'm gonna go through the process of what it, do, what it takes to pull pins out of that. I pulled four pins out and then I proceeded to do the wiring. They show you, they give you a little bit of a description, but it doesn't tell you exactly how. They reference a special tool that I didn't have. So I'll show you how I did that and then uh, I'll march through the process that I used to wire this up. Before I show pulling pins from the connector, I'll just show you, this is the schematic that came with the instructions from Jeep. And if you notice, it shows the ECU and it gives you which pins you need to add, 12, five, seven, and 23. It turns out 23 is already wired there, so that's one you don't have to worry about. There's two other ones, too. There's 34. That one I did have to run. And there's a sensor ground. That one was already run. So out of the six wires, this one was already there, and this one was already there. So you end up having to run these four. And in my Jeep, the clock spring... That's the little mechanism that allows your steering wheel to turn and have electrical connectors go, electrical uh, conduits go through it. That was already wired. My steering wheel uh, switch wiring was already in place. And so I just had to add these four, and then I had to add this wire that comes out of the brake switch and goes over the speed control. Then I had to add a ground wire from the speed control to vehicle ground. So you end up with four, five, six wires that you run, the other two are already in place for you. For the 06 year, the, one of the wires is actually in the C2 plug. It turns out that wire is one of the ones that's already run, and so you don't need to add a pin to that connector because it's already there. It was for me at least, and there's another one that's 24. That one is needed, but it was already run for me also. So they only show the four that you're gonna have to add. So this is the used connector that I got from a junkyard. You can see it was a little bit melted and it's been out in the sun, so it was pretty brittle. 
But the first thing you have to do is remove this cover from the back. When it comes, this is on there. You can see it has four little tabs that fit through here. These, in trying to remove those, three of them broke. They're very brittle. It's hard not to do that. When I did it on my Jeep, I was very, very careful and still broke a couple of them. But you pry those out of these little slots. You remove the cover. When you remove the cover, this piece is behind it, and so is this gasket there down in there. What I've done is I've taken this and just slid it back on the wires. This blue gasket is down in there. You sort of pick that out with a little screwdriver and slide it back so that you can see the wires in here. Then there's a little locking mechanism right here, and I've put a screwdriver and I popped that mechanism to the side. When you do that, it unlocks the wires so that you can remove them. And then, when it comes time to remove them, they say you have to have a special tool because if you look carefully, see these are empty. There's three in a row that are empty and then you can see pins in these ones. In order to get them out, there's a tiny slot right above the hole and they make a special tool that fits in there. It's so narrow. I tried a lot of different things and I couldn't really get anything to fit in there until I tried just a really s slender paper clip and you insert the paper clip into this slot it's going to slide in about three-eighths of an inch and it stops then you have to put quite a bit of force on it so what I did is I grabbed it with pliers I want you to be able to see I grabbed it with pliers and just left myself maybe an eighth of an inch now I'm going to push in listen for a little click when I push it in did you hear that? That little click, that releases the wire. And then you can come to the back, you feel a click and you hear a little thud. You come to the back, it slides right out. You need four of these. And when you put them into your Jeep, you go to your ECU connector, you do the same process. You take, the, take it apart, unlock it, and then you can just slip these through the back of this through the gasket slip them into there and when you push them in they'll click in place and they'll lock and once you have all four of them in the right places then you can push this back down and it will lock all the pins in place here is the wire that i added to the c3 plug and you can see this is the plug i've taken it apart Got the cover off, got this spread out, and what you can see is I added this wire, so I had to add 5, 7, 12, and 34. So this one I've added, this one I added, and the others are in the other rows. And so I had to drill out the holes a little bigger. You can see there are little studs on the back side of each hole that you have to drill out and pull them out of there. And once you've got those in there, this is what the front is going to look like. Okay, you see there are starting, this is upper right hand corner is plug number one. You see an empty, an empty, three empty, I added five, empty, I added seven. The next row starts with 10. There was one there, I added 11. The bottom left-hand corner, if you count over four, that one had, it starts 38, 37, 36 is empty, 35, 34 was the one I had to add. So all those pins are added before they were empty. And I think I'm ready to put this connector back together and then you can see these spools, I'm going to feed those up and over the back of the firewall. Now I'm going to check to make sure that the pinouts in here go to the right wire. So I have the red wire clipped to my ohm meter. And now what I'm going to do, if you look very closely here, red is supposed to be number 34. So this is eight, seven, six, five. This is 34. Okay, 
So that checks out. I do that with each one of the conductors to make sure I wired them to the right pins. This is where you feed the wires through the firewall and then you put them through this rubber cup like that and they run up to the dash. For the 2006 model year, the major connector that these wires are supposed to run through is called C301. This is the dashboard half of that. And you can see these are the numbers where it's supposed to go. Right along here, it's supposed to be 36, 37, and 38. And those wires are not there. They're missing on this side. And of course, this is the side that they typically wouldn't be on anyway. And on this, they're missing. Actually, it's this side right here. They're missing as well. So I couldn't find the wires on either side of that connector. I did find them at the brake switch. So the, all the wires are there at the brake switch. I also found the wires here. This is under the steering column. So there's two wires. There's a violet. There's this one here. And there's the violet are the two wires that I need. So I have all the wires I need. I'll splice into them. I just couldn't find them at the connector, which seems strange. So I went to a lot of work on that for nothing. I'm just going to put that back together. You can see I took apart the, took the speaker out here so I could get in and look at that. I took this lower panel off so I could reach in and see these wires. Those are all pretty easy to take off. A couple of screws and a couple of little clips that clip in right here. So that's where I am so far with this. The way that I got the brake connector out was I pulled this whole assembly. This goes into a bracket with a square hole to get it undone. You just turn it about 45 degrees counterclockwise and pull it out. That connector fits into here, but I couldn't tell looking up under the dash how to get it out if there were any little clips to push. It turns out it just pulls straight out it's held in with a couple of little tabs that you can see right here, but you don't push on anything. You just pull them out. Those just add resistance. It's, it's tough to pull out, but it does pull out. It was easier to have this out where I could see it and grab it to pull it out. This shows the wiring underneath the steering wheel. You can see here, there are two wires that go to the cruise control. There's the dark blue, dark green wire. This one was already hooked up all the way to the ECU for me. So I didn't have to do anything to that wire. The violet one, however, I had to splice into. If you look right here, you can see my splice. I spliced a red wire to it. This red wire, I soldered and shrink wrapped it. This red wire goes down through the firewall. It actually goes up over here and then down through the firewall and it connects to terminal 38 on the ECU plug. Now I'm going to put these switches onto the steering wheel. You can see the current ones are just blank here. I've got to remove this center portion right here. To do that, you can see there are little screws back here this is a threaded screw that eight, has an 8mm eight head. There's one on this side in that recess. There's one on the other side on a matching recess. Remove those, and this center section will come out. Okay, I've got the screws out. Now, when I lift this out, you can see it's got wires holding it on. But you can also see that there are two little plugs. There's a plug there. There's a plug here. Those will plug into the switches that I'm installing. You can see there's a Phillips screw on each of those panels that you take out. That's what holds the switches in. This is the airbag and it's connected with this wire here. So you really don't wanna mess that up. You can see that I've installed the switches this one on this side with the connector in it. The connector just has a little tab that you press down on to get it out of the holder, out of the previous panel, and then it clips in here. 
same thing here and they just mount with the single screw that screw also holds on this back piece of trim this plastic and I'm gonna replace this is the top and this is the part that goes back in the center I'm gonna put that back in when the wiring is all done this is what it looks like this is the ECU plug if you look in, you can see where my spliced wires are coming out the back. They're in this conduit. They come up here across the back of, across the top of the firewall. And then you can see right here, I had to feed wires down and through that plug that's down there into the into the driver compartment. So what you have here, you have two conductors, five and 12, just continue along. And that's gonna go to one and two of your, let me follow this along. So it comes down here, it comes around and you can see it comes back up to this connector. There are four conductors on this connector at the servo. So when you come to this junction, two of them just continue straight on. That's gonna be conductors one and two for that plug on the servo. The third one goes down through the firewall and it's going to connect to brake switch, uh, to the wires on the brake switch number three, then brake switch number four wire, you splice a wire in and feed it back up this way because it's going to come back up here and it's going to go through the conduit to the con to the number three conductor on this connector and then if you look carefully you can see back there that yellow terminal so i have a ground wire i grounded it there you can see the wire comes up it also becomes part of this bundle that goes through this and so you end up with four wires that come over here. You have one and two that come straight from the, the ECU. You have number three that's coming up from brake switch number four, and then you have the ground wire. And so those are all the conductors that you need here at the servo. There's one more wire that feeds down through the firewall and that's the wire that goes to the violet wire in the steering column. So this is what is, this is the complete wiring when it's ready to go. This is the connector that goes to the servo. As you can see, I have four wires that I explained come across the top of the firewall. The blue wire comes from ECU pin number 12, it comes to this brown wire, which is pin number one. If you look at the back of this connector, you'll see it has the numbers right on it. So that gives you one, and you look at those numbers, one is the brown one, the green one is number two, and so number two goes to white, which for me comes from pin number five in the ECU, and then green goes, green connects to this blue sort of wire. That's the number three. If you look at here, it lines up with number three. And that one comes from the brake switch wire number four on the brake switch. The last one you can see is black. Black goes to black. That's the ground wire. That's the fourth conductor on this connector and it goes to ground and I explained that it's grounded on the vehicle. So that's how this connector is configured and then of course it attaches here and then it has this little red clip once it's connected you put that down it locks it in place. I installed the servo unit here you can see the bracket I put a 14 number 14 sheet metal screw there it used a threaded screw down there from the other bracket that was on here this thing 
gets placed, there's a little place on this bracket to hold it. You can see I've got my harness plugged in. And then you can see this cable threads around. There's a clip for it there. It crosses over. It comes under here. There's a clip for it there. It goes into this bracket. There's a square hole and it clips in there. And then it comes over here to the throttle body and it clips onto there. It looks like they leave a little bit of extra play in it so that it doesn't pull. You see that it doesn't pull on the throttle body when you're not using it. This knee panel is held on by three tabs that you can see along the bottom. And those tabs fit into these slots that you can see here. There's three of those along the bottom. Then at the top of it, there's these clips. There's clips. Those go into these slots right here. And then there's screw holes right here. And you can see those on the front of the panel. So there's a couple of screw holes. Screws hold it in. But you have to fit these tabs. And you have to fit these snaps into the right thing. So taking it apart, that gives you an idea how to, once you get the screws out, how to pull it. Basically pull it from the top and it hinges at the bottom. It helps to see what these parts look like when they're taken apart. This is the bottom and this is the top piece of trim that go over the steering column. I wanted to show you that there's two screw holes, so you take out a couple of screws to get it to come undone, but you also have these little tabs. So there's tabs on each side. So once you get it on, you'll know what those look like, and then there's corresponding pieces over here. And they kind of fit together and fit in there. You can see those little posts sticking up kind of fit inside there. So it holds itself together. You have to kind of pop it apart. You can see where those tabs grab onto these little things here. So that's how that comes apart. Here's the tabs over there. You just pull it apart once you get the screws out. Putting on this corner trim piece, you can see there's two places here and here where it clips in and then there's two holes here and here for screws to go in. You use these little screws here and this is what the clips look like. To connect the vacuum line you can see what I did is I used a small line because where it connects on that T is a small fitting. So I used a small line that fits snug on that. I fed it back here but the servo has a large fitting. So I cut a piece of tubing, a larger piece of tubing that fits on that, and it turns out the small tubing fits right inside the large tubing. So I just used a little section of this to adapt it to the larger fitting that's on the servo. I just did my test drive. Works great. When you push this and turn it on, you can see it illuminates the cruise sign right there on the dashboard. I tried all the functions, set, the resume in Excel, coast, cancel. Watch when I push cancel here, turns it off and it works perfectly. There was some discussion about whether or not the ECU is programmed for it if your car didn't come with it, but my car did not come with it. The ECU runs it perfectly, works like a champ.